Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to give you guys a quick update on the Samsung Galaxy S3 for Verizon Wireless, because this phone just started receiving Jelly Bean, that's version 4.1 of the Android operating system, over the air. This is the last Galaxy S3 out there to get Jelly Bean. As you can see, I'm getting my notification right now telling me to download this update, which is roughly a little over, a hair over 400 megabytes, so a pretty big update. But before I do that, I just want to show you guys, for those of you out there wondering how to actually do this update, some of you are saying, oh, that's really easy, Ed, why demonstrate it? But I know there are users out there that don't know how to do it, so I'm going to just take you through it since I haven't done the update yet. Go ahead and hit the menu button, then System Settings, then you're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom to About Device, and then basically just hit System Update. It'll then check for an update. You'll then be prompted. You'll see this Software Update screen, and you're just going to say OK, because you don't want to reject it or defer it and then basically the download should begin. Now, I'm not seeing it in my status. Let's wait a second. Nope, now it has begun. I just saw it pop up as I turn the phone a little bit on you guys. But there it is. So it has begun. Now this is going to take some time. There's no question about it. I anticipate that. Uh, so in the meantime, let me tell you guys a little bit about what we're going to expect from the actual uh, Jelly Bean update. So version 4.1 is not the latest version of Jelly Bean, but out of the box originally we were working with Ice Cream Sandwich, which certainly very capable, very smooth experience. Uh, those of you who watched my coverage of the Samsung Galaxy S3 know that it was one of my favorite devices uh, out there on the market. Certainly one of the most popular Android phones to date. Uh, the best selling, no question about that. And for good reason. A uh, very good dual core processor, uh, also two gigs of RAM, great NFC, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi chipsets. Very good out of the box, really. So this is one of the few Android phones on the market that you don't have to do a lot with. Uh, rooting really not necessary and that's rare for me to say because a lot of Android experiences I mean clearly rooting is a matter of personal preference what you want to be able to do with your device but in terms of functionality TouchWiz really for the first time not a piece of bloatware works quite well so that's a big thing because usually going through the motions with most of the skins that are out there I have to say is really not worth the investment of my time, I believe, or most of you out there. And that's why a lot of us enjoy customizing Android. And that's part of the beauty of the OS. You can pretty much do anything you want with it, whether it's through launchers or doing just about anything you want. Uh, custom ROMs, of course, you do need an unlocked bootloader. I'm not going to get into that stuff. But updates like this, Samsung clearly not known for getting these updates out in time. Uh, a poor reputation. But hopefully this is part of that change. Granted, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, they are very late to the party when we actually line it up with the balance of carriers who I'm pretty sure everyone else other than Verizon was able to get this update out about a month ago. So considering the fact that uh, Verizon also had the Samsung Galaxy S3 later than everyone else, similarly uh, to what has gone on now with the Galaxy Note 2, another phone that launched you know, basically a month previous, or prior, I should say, to its launch on Verizon. Similar thing here. Uh, of course, this was the precedent set with the Galaxy S3 because, as I mentioned before, this is the best-selling Android phone uh, out right now. I do think the Galaxy Note 2 is going to become the second best-selling considering we know it did move over 5 million pieces before uh, it actually was even sold through Verizon. And despite whether you're a fan of Verizon or not, we all know they are uh, a tremendous carrier, great service, you can't really deny that. Uh, it's not really a matter so much of where you're located anymore like it used to be uh, because their LTE network right now is pretty much the largest and strongest in the network. Uh, of course, time will tell if they remain uh, the top dog, but for now, I still recommend to all my users out there, if it is uh, affordable, feasible in terms of uh, your economic situation, then Verizon's definitely a great carrier to go with, uh, especially since everyone is pretty much tiered. Granted, T-Mobile right now, some very good offers, but uh, at least where I'm located, T-Mobile's network is not the strongest uh, for my personal use or business use. Uh, so Verizon still takes the cake there. You can see this download's taking some time. We're at 67%, 68 as I said that. Do keep in mind, though, that this is over 400 megabytes, so uh, a very sizable update. Part of uh, also something to me that signifies how powerful these devices have become. 
uh, whether we're talking about this phone or the Galaxy Note 2. The fact that an update is that heavy just shows you how much work has gone into updating uh, the experience, uh, hopefully radio performance, battery life, uh, the overall TouchWiz environment, which as I mentioned before, TouchWiz is really, really good. Uh, so I only expect even better things. I have been working with basically this version of Jelly Bean on the Galaxy Note 2, which you guys know I've, I've had since launch, and really very solid. Haven't run into many problems. It should be very, very similar uh, in terms of the experience we're going to get out of the Samsung Galaxy S3. Obviously, no S Pen uh, involved, but overall a very, very similar environment since they're both running the same version, I believe, of TouchWiz. I'm not positive on that, but I'll know once this gets updated and I can look at both phones. And outside of that, I know we've got an update in the camera. I know that. Uh, obviously, the notifications have changed, much like on the Nexus 10. We don't have that tablet notification system of a left and a right uh, notification system, or I shouldn't say notification, but settings and notification uh, being up at the top. But they are now a little bit different in terms of the layout, but it's the same thing that we've got on the Galaxy Note 2 across all carriers, where they've basically included a call button. Uh, some quick shortcuts have been built in to your notification menu is what I should say to uh, make it as succinct as possible. But here we are now up to 98%, so at least just about done with the download. And uh, for those of you who have hung in there, uh, you know, thanks. Uh, or I hope you're enjoying at least because I questioned whether or not it was worth showing you guys the actual update. But here we go. Now we've got uh, the traditional warning. We're going to go ahead and say OK. And uh, again, this will take us through the paces of rebooting and actually installing Jelly Bean. So pretty excited to actually see Jelly Bean finally on this phone because as I stated, Samsung notorious for getting these updates out late. But when you've got a great device like the Galaxy S3, which across all carriers, I mean, I really find it far and few between uh, any users out there that are disappointed with the performance of this device. In fact, most people who've never tried Android that step into the Galaxy S3 fall in love with Android. And it's part of you know the fact that you've got great hardware, but it's also a matter of fact that Samsung does a very good job at introducing people who've never used an Android handset to the operating system and getting them accustomed to using it for pretty much all of their day-to-day -day needs even if they're migrating from you know, BlackBerry or iOS. And that's something that not many Android uh, manufacturers do as well as Samsung. I think that's part of the reason that Samsung is uh, the latest Nexus partner. And also the fact that they sell more Android devices than any manufacturer in the world certainly does not hurt. So this phone between uh, the camera updates, notification updates, overall performance, I think we're only going to see good things out of Jelly Bean. You do have the benefit of Project Butter, uh, which also gives you Google Now. So voice activation, or excuse me, not voice activation, but voice commands have just grown with this update. You're not looking at the same old traditional commands that you were, I don't want to say stuck with, because still Android did set the bar for voice commands. Uh, but now you get a whole nother level with Google Now as far as also gaining Google's uh, card system. So, you know, getting uh, instant cues for things like your uh, travel time to get home on any given day, back from work, all of these things from your lifestyle and the intelligence of uh, Jelly Bean are going to be incorporated into the TouchWiz environment. And TouchWiz is already, in my opinion, as I've stated through the course of this video, one of, if not the best, uh, overlays or environments that you could possibly have running on top of Android, especially now that we have hardware that doesn't end up looking taxed when having to deal with TouchWiz uh, in addition to uh, the stock Android that runs underneath. So that's a really big step. And then part of that is obviously these brand new processors we have, whether you're looking at the dual core chip in here or the quad core Exynos. Uh, that is in the international version of this phone or the Galaxy Note 2, which is clearly a, a newer chip, but still also a quad-core Exynos. The two gigs of RAM, these things just make for super phones, in my opinion. We're not really looking at traditional smartphones anymore. We're now dealing with a whole new class of device. And that's part of what makes this phone a really great value now here in the holidays. It's gone down. Uh, in some cases, I've seen it even for free. 
So this is a phone that if you're interested in getting right now, it's certainly a very good time since it is running the latest version uh, of the Android operating system that you can actually get without getting uh, a Nexus device, which a Nexus device is a great device in my opinion. Uh, certainly probably the only the device to beat right now as long as you're not interested in LTE if you are in the market for a phone. Uh, again, that's also if you're not interested in something larger like the Note. That's not for everyone since the Note 2 is a much larger device, different class device. But uh, when it comes to getting a Jelly Bean experience right now, 4.1 is as up to date as you can possibly be. So that does put the Samsung Galaxy S3 now on every single carrier, including Verizon, which we're still waiting for this update. Uh, that puts them all pretty much right where every new handset out of the box is. So whether you're picking up a Note, the DNA, uh, or any other phone for any other carrier, 4.1 is as up to date as you can possibly be unless you're on a Nexus handset. And uh, if you're interested in the Nexus handset, I've seen it, I really do like it, but I have to say I'm spoiled on Verizon's LTE. And personally, if I was in a market where LTE was still a non-issue or maybe didn't use the LTE in the fashion that I do personally, then maybe I wouldn't care. But overall, what I've gotten out of uh, both this phone as well as the Galaxy Note 2, uh, I really have nothing negative to say, only positive things. And as a result, I don't feel like I'm missing anything uh, from the Nexus environment, especially since I've got LTE and the S Pen. Right now, guys, I'm loving the Galaxy Note 2, really uh, the best device I've ever touched out of a box. And the fact that now uh, the uh, bootloader has been unlocked and custom ROMs are on the way really says a lot for how much better that device can possibly get uh, as developers get their hands into it. And that also comes from the sheer number of units that Samsung sells when it comes to this phone as well as the Note 2. So Samsung really doing their part to manufacture great equipment. And I'm not just being a, a fan of Samsung here. It's just a matter of fact and what's available right now in the market. So hope I haven't put you guys completely to sleep. Uh, you know, I don't rehearse this. This is just... I'm waiting for this update to finish and pretty much everything that I've told you guys is just how I feel about both this handset and the Galaxy Note 2. And Samsung didn't used to be this way. There's no question if you've uh, been a fan of theirs for a long time or, or hated them, uh, the complete opposite obviously, then you know what their phones have been like. Uh, build construction quality, uh, the internal components, really Samsung has changed in many ways. Yes, their build has stayed the same and that we're still working uh, with a plastic build overall. Uh, oh, it's rebooting. I thought it just the screen had stopped there for a second. Um, but even though we're dealing with that plastic construction, you're still getting overall one of the best experiences that you could possibly ask for. So finally, we're booting up into what should be Jelly Bean now, version 4.1. And this just changes the game for this phone because now you're not getting a device out of the box that's behind every current handset on the market. So 4.1 is the standard uh, right now. If you want to go over uh, you know, all of the different features, uh, you can feel free to search that out. It just brings everything that you could possibly want in a mobile OS right now. And the fact that you've got great hardware, as I've mentioned over and over again, certainly doesn't hurt. So we're still going through the upgrade process. And also, this will give those of you out there who haven't purchased the phone, because you're going to need to do this update. Uh, I don't imagine that the handsets will be coming out of the box updated for quite a while. Again, this is with Verizon. I'm only speaking for Verizon Wireless, uh, because when an over-the-air update rolls out like this, it does usually take uh, you know a good amount of time before the handsets are being actually shipped, upgraded. So. Right now, the entire up, uh, upgrade has taken roughly 14 minutes, uh, give or take. So uh, I would have to guess we'll probably be done in the next minute, at least with the update, finally get to a home screen and be able to at least show you guys what I expect some of the improvements are. And Samsung may even give us a walkthrough as they often do, because as I mentioned earlier, that's one of their hallmarks. And I give them a lot of credit because too few manufacturers really focus on making sure that the owner of their brand new device learns how to use it properly. And so much of satisfaction with your device ends up coming down to whether or not you know how to use it properly. I, whether, this, whether we're talking about cameras, 
uh, phones, tablets, computers. If you don't know how to use what you have, you could have the best device in the world and think it's garbage simply because you know you just don't know how to leverage it properly. So it's good that they have done the right thing with at least most of their devices over the last year. Uh, and this phone really is the flagship device. So here we are finally a Jelly Bean. 15 minutes a hair over, you know, and we finally have it. Take you guys straight to system settings and see what we're working with here. Make sure that our update is up to date. So I just went into system settings and as you guys can see, we are now running version 4.1.1. So as I mentioned earlier, still no 4.2. Don't know where that's going to be on the roadmap. Don't really have any expectations of it at the moment. Uh, that's not to say Samsung will not be updating this device further. I think they will since they've sold over 30 million of these. Uh, but again, we're talking about the Verizon version, not to make uh, those of you out there who own the Verizon version uh, worry or uh, upset about owning the Verizon copy of this phone, but updates a little bit slower here, as you all know and see from the fact that uh, a month later we finally now have Jelly Bean. But with that said, excited to see overall performance, how the device operates, and really give you guys uh, impressions. Again, as I mentioned, some improvements, uh, the camera, uh, Google now. I'll go over them as I spend more time with the phone. But if you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.